Hello everyone and welcome back to another Starfield console mod video for Xbox. Currently there are 250 mods now available to download and try out in the game and I've been busy testing some of them and narrowed it down to the best ones I think you should try for yourself. Obviously with there only being around 250 mods currently, the selection isn't too big but hopefully these will still be ones you enjoy. Before we start, a big thanks to all the new subscribers to the channel for these Starfield videos. Let's take a look. Inquisitor's Annihilator Assault Rifle. This mod adds two new standalone weapons to the game, a standard and legendary version of the Annihilator Assault Rifle. Both versions share the same upgrades, but the legendary version has a unique perk, and both weapons are designed for high intensity gameplay, not stealth, and do not include suppressors for that reason. The standard weapon unlocks at the industrial workbench at level 20 and the legendary at level 30. The weapon is extremely stable with minimal recoil. It has a any quality tag, meaning the damage scales with the player's level at the time of crafting, so it won't scale with your level, so you'll have to craft new ones to get better stats on it as you level up. The Annihilator offers extensive customization with 43 different options, including some very cool neon lights on them, and it uses 11mm ammo, has a 200 default fire rate, has the Berserker scale on it, so it does more damage the less armor the enemy has, has Hitman on it, which gives 15% damage while aiming, and that extra legendary effect is called Assault. After a kill, gain 15% movement speed for 15 seconds. Rustic Lodge Quarters Overhaul. This mod is a simple but decent one that changes the bedroom in the lodge to be a bit better. It has more stuff a bedroom would have, like a desk, racks for your weapons, armors, and helmets. Also, there are more storage spaces, and the rest has more furniture and decorations to make it feel more lived in. The only issue with this mod is they haven't properly moved or removed the storage safe that was initially in the room, so that needs fixed. But overall, I like the changes made to the room and would love to see the entire lodge get a makeover like this. Next we have the Batman mod. Adds a tactical bat suit from Zack Snyder's Justice League, ported from Injustice 2 with permission from Warner Brothers Games. All the items can be crafted at the industrial workbench. The cowl comes in two variants, one with a rebreather and one with Ben Affleck's face under the cowl. And it's not very lore friendly, but it does look cool when you're roaming around the streets of Neon in your Batman outfit. It isn't legendary, so the stats aren't too good, but still a fun mod to try out. Desolation's Point of Interest Overhaul. This mod aims to create a more realistic world building experience while still providing points of interest for players who enjoy exploring and grinding. The first change restricts points of interest with human habitation to planets inside the cell systems or those with breathable atmospheres outside. This aligns with more lore and makes settlers decisions more logical, resulting in a more empty galaxy as it should be. These changes significantly reduce the number of randomly encountered human points of interest while still leaving an infinite number to be found in the core worlds. This mod also reduces the number of points of interest on planets. Where you land on a planet, you will now only encounter one or two points of interest instead of being surrounded by them. The density of human points of interest varies based on the distance from the core worlds. So planets closer to the core are more densely populated, while those further away have fewer points of interest with humans in them. No points of interest will spawn in the desert or mountains, only the habitable parts of planets. Our next mod is a paid mod called Frankie's Emporium. I wasn't sure whether I was going to add too many paid mods into these videos, however a poll I did yesterday on my channel, it had over 4,000 upvotes in the first 12 hours and over 60% of you said you didn't mind having paid mods as an option, so I'm happy to cover more paid mods in these videos. And the first one we're looking at is called Frankie's Emporium. A new merchant has hit the streets of Neon, Frankie's cute little shop is neatly snuggled in a nook between the Trade Authority and Seacart's Outfitters. He's just a little robot guy who lives in this little area here and he sells you some stuff. Frankie has many fabulous wares including a prototype laser capable of mining resources, a legendary jetpack and much more cool items for you to purchase. evidence that Ryujin's influence has spread from their tower and out into the city. Inquisitor's Mech Overlord Boss. This mod introduces a formidable new mech boss located in the one-of-a-kind salvage location. The Mech Overlord Boss has 200,000 HP, 750 armor and 750 energy armor, making it a challenging opponent, 
and it's immune to anti-gravity effects and similar abilities. The boss is armed with an energy machine gun and ballistic machine gun, with each bullet dealing 10 damage. The fight can be especially tough if your weapon lacks corrosion, poison or other elemental effects, as poison is particularly effective due to its percentage max health damage. Due to some issues with collisions, detection, aiming at the boss chest is recommended. Although when I was fighting it, I found it was easier to shoot at its feet as I was using more explosive ammo. For boss loot, the defeating the mech overlord boss rewards the player with overlord uniform, a brand new legendary outfit with the following effects. 80% less weapon weight, 80% less resource weight, 10% chance to stagger enemies, and an additional 200 kilograms carry capacity. The boss drops 75 adhesive, various components and ammo. Lastly, there's a random boss chest next to the enemy, which contains five random legendary armors, five random legendary weapons, and a substantial amount of ammo. Silent Sounds is a mod that makes the game more immersive by removing sound effects for several things in game. Removes level up, location discover, mission related, skill magazine read, and similar sounds, and is intended for more immersive gameplay. Opening and closing menus, inventory, skills, etc. all have been removed, and in total 43 sounds have been edited or removed with this mod. The iconic Bethesda game mod, Darker Nights, is available to download in-game, where nighttime and indoor exploring is more immersive as the lights are lowered, making darkness more like real life. Now using your torch is more important than ever, and travelling during the day and sleeping at night might be something you need to do more often. Also keep in mind with this mod I have the Colour Filter Removal mod installed, and that's making everything look a lot clearer as well. But Darker Nights is definitely a mod that everyone should install, and that's the same for any Bethesda game. Realistic Neon Signs. This mod aims to make Neon Core feel more realistic and immersive. A big issue with the signs in Neon Core is the advertisements screens are not in direct line of sight for pedestrians. Often the adverts were facing 90 degrees away from traffic and facing walls instead, and this resulted in pure viewing angles and minimal amount of direct attention focused viewing. This has been addressed with the mod, now signs point directly at the viewership traffic. This not only increases realism, but greatly aids in player immersion. In some cases, the signs have also been moved, duplicated and deleted to avoid further issues, increase duration of visibility and prevent viewers being able to avoid visual contact. It's not a huge mod, but it does make some good improvements to Neon. Our final mod is another paid mod called StarSim Mining Conglomerate. The Mining Conglomerate is the inaugural mod for StarSim, which aims to be a series of mods that will improve the immersion of the game. And basically, it wants to turn Starfield into a space simulation experience. This mod introduces a comprehensive simulation system that covers various elements including asteroids, ships and stations, and one of the key features is a new docking system interface on stations, allowing players to interact through a terminal interface instead of boarding. The interface facilitates numerous functions, such as NPC communication, accessing mission boards with unique jobs and other activities related to the creation, thereby streamlining gameplay and saving time. So upon starting a new game, players receive an engaging quest from Argos Extractors, their current employer. As they are directed to return to the Lodge, they will be guided to the Argos Space HQ in Jimson Orbit. You need to wait a little while in game for this to show up. The quest introduces the new station interface and prompts players to begin undertaking tasks from the mission board at the HQ. Once you've done some of these successfully, you will then be asked to become a manager. So this will lead to a promotion opportunity within Argos Extractors where players transition to management role at a newly established Argos mining station. The module brings several significant features including a reimagined space mining experience and new mission board types such as mining asteroids, protecting mining operations and defending both the mining HQ and mining station. It introduces two new stations, the Argos Space HQ, a hub for coordinating space affairs and a drop-off point for mining ships and the Argos mining station integrated into a giant asteroid to produce resources. Stations feature bulletin boards with universal related announcements and messages and players can now receive mail access via the space interface. The management minigame is also included to ensure the station's productivity meets faction requirements. And so essentially this mod just gives you something else to do and new ways to make resources and money and earn XP in the game and also gives you something else to do while you're in space as well. And like I said, it's just one in a series of mods that plan to make the game more immersive. Guys, that's it for this video. Another 10 console mods worth checking out in Starfield and Xbox One. And of course, all are available to download on PC. 
If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment about your favorite mod so far, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.